Wow, it's been a while since the last time I made a good old Photoshop tutorial, but some of you have been asking me how I made the thumbnail for this video. So I guess it's time, time for a new Photoshop tutorial. Let me show you how you can make yourself pop out of your phone screen or TV screen, computer, whatever you want. Okay, so first of all, what do you need if you want to Photoshop yourself popping out of your phone? Three photos, a photo of you holding your phone, then also a photo of you pretending to climb out of your phone screen. So pay attention to how you hold your hands. With my right hand, I'm pretending to grab the edge of the phone. I'm also leaning forward a little bit to make the end result look even more convincing. And then finally, a photo of just the background. I set the focus on my hand first at the same distance from the camera where my face was before because I want the background to be blurry, just like the background of the photo of me, if you know what I mean. And I took each photo with exactly the same lighting because that'll make it easier to make the end result, the composite, look more realistic. And then just fire up Photoshop and let's start editing. First, with the pen tool, I'm going to draw a path in the shape of the screen. Make sure it says path here and start drawing. Click to create your first anchor point and then just keep clicking. Now to make a curve, two options. First option, just click and drag and you can make your curve. But if you've already made a curve and you click to create your next anchor point, Photoshop will automatically create a curve based on the previous curve. And it might make it difficult to get the right curve. You know what I mean? So what you can do each time you make a curve is to hold the Option or Alt key and click on the anchor point and it will reset it. And now if you make a new anchor point here, it won't automatically make another curve and you have all control again. And then it's just a matter of going around the screen. Close the path here and you're done. Then go to the Paths tab here and rename the path to Phone, for example. And then open the photo of the background and drag and drop it onto the photo of the phone. And now all you need to do is in the Paths tab, hit this icon to convert the path into a selection. Go back to the Layers tab, select the photo of the background. Wait, let me rename these there. Select a photo of the background and with the selection active, hit this icon to create a mask and boom. And if you want to resize or reposition it, all you need to do is deactivate the link between the mask and the photo here. Select the photo of the background by clicking on its thumbnail and, and then hit Command T or I think Control T if you're working on Windows. And now you can reposition and resize the background within the mask. Okay, it looks pretty good now, but here at the top, the phone is a bit blurry, out of focus. And this edge here, well, it looks, it's too hard now. There are a few options to fix this. The easiest way, I think, is to copy the layer, make one of the two invisible, and on the other one, I'm going to right click and apply the layer mask. This will cut out the screen in the shape of the mask and all the rest of the photo will be gone. But you still have the other layer just in case you ever need it again. And then select the blur tool and blur the edge here. Probably until halfway the screen. Something like that, looks okay. Now if in your photo the whole phone is in focus then you don't even have to do this. It's just details, you know? Okay, and then open the photo of yourself. Drag and drop it so it creates a new layer. And then let's also rename it. And now we're going to remove the background. And instead of the pen tool, I'm going to use the quick mask tool. That's this icon right here. Set the brush size to not too big, also not too small. Something in between, I guess. <laughs> And also set it here to add to selection. That's the one with the plus symbol. And then just start selecting. Click and drag, click and drag. If there's enough contrast between yourself and the background, it will do a pretty good job. Here at the left, it doesn't really matter if I get it or not because it will be cut away anyway. And once you're done, click on select and mask up here. And here we can refine the edges of our mask. 
So select the Refine Edges tool. Again, make the brush not too big, not too small. Just play around with it a little bit to see what gets you the best result. And then just paint over the edges where the mask is not perfect. For example, hair or some blurry parts. And Photoshop will automatically create the perfect mask for you. But don't worry if it doesn't because you can always refine it manually. Hit OK. And same as before, with the selection active and the layer with the photo of yourself selected, hit this icon and boom, it creates a mask again. And now all we need to do is manually remove some parts that we don't want. Select the brush tool, make sure the mask is selected here and also make sure that the colors are set to pure black and pure white. Just hit this little icon here. And now, painting with black works like an eraser, but when I switch to white, I can make the removed areas appear again. And from here on, it's just a matter of getting the details right. Get rid of all this, and if you click somewhere with the brush tool and then hold shift and click somewhere else, it'll make a straight line. And then of course, we have to make my fingers appear again. And you can adjust the size of the brush, also the hardness of the brush, so that in the end, it looks perfect. Just go around to see if it needs some refining or not. I think this looks okay for now. Then, down here, I need to get rid of the table. So what I'll do is select the photo of myself, go to Edit, and then Transform and Warp. And I'm going to pull this down so that my t-shirt goes just over the edge of the screen. Hit OK. You could also use the Liquify filter here if you want even more control. And then go back to the Paths window here and convert the path into a selection and then up here go to selection and inverse select the brush tool again set it to black make sure the mask is selected here that's super important and just get rid of this part here and you're basically done all that's left now is maybe add some details like shadows here under my fingers for example with the brush tool i'll make a new layer here almost all the way at the bottom and then set the blend mode of that layer to multiply and now let's just paint some shadows. I could also add some shadow down here, but then I need to add a layer at the top. Load the selection of the screen and paint some shadow down here. Take down the opacity of the layer and done. And that's it, not too difficult, right? But yeah, depending on your level of experience in Photoshop, it might take a while, you know, to get it perfect. Uh, I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching. Go create something cool now, start practicing, and see you in the next one.